Hey everybody, welcome back to Sparks Fire and Bale and Wire. Today we're going to start on the front end of this golf cart. Hopefully you watched the rear half. If you didn't, go check out part one of this series. Let's tear into it. As promised, the front half is just as bad as the back. That's one front wheel. That's the other. This one actually feels worse than the other side does. We'll get the wheels off of it and get these bushings out. Okay, the front should be pretty straightforward just like the back. Start by removing this shock bolt. And then the upper lower spindle bolts. There's two more back in here for this upper A arm. There's bushings in there too. But I don't think I can get a camera on that. So I'll probably get those off off camera and then show you what I got once I get it apart. shock off first. I can get that pried up far enough. Just enough room for that. And I'll just swivel the shock up out of the way for now. Yeah, looks like that should stay there. Actually, I have bushings on the top. That surprises me. if these have not been replaced at some point in the recent past. Actually that front, the other end of the A-arm where there's two bolts that keep it aligned. But I can see those bushings look real good too. So that'll make this job a lot simpler on the front end. But as you can see, the back or the the bottom one on the leaf spring is the same as what I have in the rear. Tie rod's good. Everything seems good in the spindle. I'll get that cleaned up. I got grease there, so I'll grease everything too while I have it apart. It looks like the front end's going to be a pretty easy job.
Well, there's that side done. Literally a five minute job. We'll go get a grease gun, get that side done, and then we'll tackle the other side. Since these upper arms, looks like the bushings are good here too. I don't know why anybody would replace the uppers and not mess with the lowers, but since that's good, we'll leave that, we'll leave the shock, we'll just do this bottom one and be done with it. Why that bolt was stuck in there and the rest were not is beyond me. But. Guess that's why I've been putting a never season all the other ones. Wonderful thing with never sees, no job's complete until you have your hands completely covered with it. Well, that was easy enough. Get some wheels on it, get it back on the ground. Time for some new sneakers for the front. Put a center cap in there.
I'll get this wheel put on and I'll get the jack stands out, get back on the ground. And I'll torque it down to proper specs on the lug nuts. Which I have not torqued the rear ones yet either. These are just the standard half inch, 20 thread per inch lug nut. Pretty common size. Pretty overkill for a golf cart. I don't know what the torque spec is on these. So once I get it down on the ground, I'll go look it up quick. And then in my next clip, I'll show you torquing them down, and I'll tell you precisely what that torque spec is, and I'll appear to be the genius that I tell everybody I am. Okay, now that I got it back on the ground and got the torque wrench out, any gearhead worth his 90 weight knows that a half inch lug nut gets torqued from 90 to 120 foot pounds of torque, that's just common knowledge. I don't have enough weight for that even. Of course you do it in an alternating pattern. So I'll go around and get the rest of them done. Well, that was quick and easy, and I guess it's going to make for a short part two of this video series. I guess now that I'm done, I can go ahead and go eat lunch, and then come back and get this thing cleaned up. Be ready to go. Time to move on to the next project. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.